You have to design procedures and the human need to be trained and capable of actually applying these procedures in a moment of crisis, which is not always uh, that easy. Installation of safety net is not the end of the, of the road, it's, it's just the beginning. It really is the beginning and it is the, the continuous process. Uh, safety nets are, as they, their name is saying, is the last line of defense. My advice um, to a new ANSP to set up safety net is at first study what you want to develop and please take all the air traffic controllers into account what they are doing there, what, what are the goals. You need a policy for, for safety nets, for implementing and for usage. You have to state quite clear what the safety nets are for, that safety nets are last resource system, that safety nets are not for separation purposes and that's the reason why. Uh, reducing the nuisance alerts to an effective minimum. It's always a trade-off because you will always have uh, nuisance alerts in order to have the good alerts at the position and it must be done with the airspace quite as it is going to be used and it's not a generic scenario you can set. If you predict two minutes in, a, in an approach environment where you have aircraft turning all the time, it just doesn't make any sense because they keep on, they're always looking at someone even though you, everyone knows they're going to turn in the next 30 seconds. So basically setting two minutes in a terminal environment doesn't make any benefit. So you need to, to tune it and then, okay, you'll go down one minute, seems to be okay. You test 50 seconds, 40, and then you reach a point where you see between 50 seconds and 30, there's hardly any difference, so why not take 50, because it's safer. Uh, when we implemented it, the, the first problem was to uh, tune the safety net to the correct uh, environment, and uh, to, to achieve that, we did offline recordings and replays in front of controllers to assess would you have appreciated an alert there or not, this kind of uh, Things. The difficulty when setting up safety nets uh, are related to the interaction between the safety net and the, and the ITM. Not only uh, looking at the safety benefit delivered by the, by the safety net, but also at any uh, interaction. For example, when introducing TCAS, uh, looking at uh, uh, the issue of large vertical deviation, that type of elements that may have an impact on uh, how the safety net is perceived. Using safety net or implementing safety net requires uh, a lot of monitoring after implementation and uh, quite continuous tuning of, uh, of parameters because the, your operational environment can change, uh, procedures can change, other elements of the ATM system which is a very interconnected system, very complex and interdependent system can influence uh, the behavior and the performance of your safety net. We in SMATSA uh, developed uh, specific training objectives. Uh, on one hand, it is important for the sake of uh, gaining controllers' acceptance of safety nets. And on the other hand, it is very important to make up for the drawbacks of safety nets performance. Because the more you uh, make controllers aware that, that uh, a safety net, like any other automated function uh, in ATC world, is not perfect, the more appropriate attitude as to performance of that safety net controllers may take. Everything is important, starting from the first letter and ending with the process. Uh, when you hear from the controllers, yes, it is the reliable tool and we will use it because we understand that without this tool, it would be more difficult for us to work.